All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time, we left off here with the uh, Italians having a wondrous uh, victory against the British Navy, which uh, we all know they didn't really. But they were going to spit it that way. We're now having France's Day of Mourning, Jaloon, Jaloon, July 14th, 1940. Frenchmen mock... Bastille Day. July 14th, the, anim the anniversary of the fall of the Bastille in 1789, is normally a day of national celebration in France. This year, the crowds were somber and dejected, as shown in the picture above of Bordeaux citizens standing in silence before the memorial of those killed in the First World War. Below, General de Gaulle is reviewing a unit of his forces after placing a wreath on the cenotaph in London, England's tribute to her dead of the First World War. So here we see many citizens. Obviously, because, yeah, World War One hit France very hard, and now they're seeing World War Two, and they're seeing the defeat here, and they're just, they're thinking, we failed, you know. We failed these boys that fought for us in the First World War. And in many ways, they did. They didn't They didn't realize they did. And it wasn't necessarily a single Frenchman's fault. But if anyone is to blame for this war, besides obviously Funny Mustache Man and all that, but if anyone is to blame, it would be the French. Um, and, well, the British too, but... Uh, the, the Treaty of Versailles is the main reason, obviously. And many would say, oh, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles gives the uh, the environment for Funny Mustache Man and all that to even take off. So without it, it just... it uh, This world doesn't happen. But, you know. But... And then we see de Gaulle sizing up his troops, preparing them on this day. Hmm. Oh, it's a twofer. German dive bombers attack a convoy in the canal. July 14th, 1940. Look at that picture. There is more to it. I just haven't read it yet. But, um, yeah. You can see the column of uh, water there. And it looks like maybe that was a ship, but it could just be another column of water. It's floating. It says, Air battle over the Strait of Dover. One of the most determined attacks by the German Air Force on British shipping in the Strait of Dover was carried out on 14th of July when about... 40 dive bombers escorted by fighters took part. Although at least seven enemy planes were destroyed, the result of the raid was negligible for, as shown in the picture, almost all the bombs fell into the sea. So yeah, that's not a ship. That's just that's, that's just seawater. Yeah, obviously, uh, the Germans don't really have the greatest effect on the British. They do blow up a lot. They do damage a lot. But the British resolve and their fight to say the least uh definitely made them uh not really care about a lot of this stuff as much as maybe another nation in history would have churchill tells the no-no germans we seek no terms and ask no mercy july 14th 1940 this is a little interesting. Mr. Churchill in his stirring broadcast to Britain and the world on July 14th, 1940. All goes to show that the war will be long and hard. No one can tell where it will spread. One thing is certain. The people of Europe will not be ruled for long by the Nono German Gestapo. Nor will the world yield itself to hit the funny mustache man's gospel of hatred and domination. Here in this in the strong city of refuge, 
or of refugee, refuge, probably is what he meant, uh, which enshrines the title deeds of human progress and is deep and is of deep consequence to Christian civilization. Here, girt, that's a weird word, girt about the seas and the oceans where the Navy range, shielded from above by staunchest and devotion of our airmen, we await undismayed the impending assault. But, be the ordeal, sharp or long, or both, we shall seek no terms. We shall tolerate no parley. We may show mercy. We shall ask none. Very Winston Churchilly. Obviously, he's, uh, you know, he's like, well, you know, we'll fight. We'll fight, and, you know, we haven't gotten... I don't believe we've gotten to his famous speech yet. It hasn't happened yet. And maybe it has. I can't remember now. But I'm sure they'll talk about that because that is pretty famous. But, yeah, they'll seek no terms from them. England prepares for invasion. Undaunted by no no German threats of annihilation, Britain prepared to defend herself against attack by sea or air. Barbed wire entanglements were erected at strategic points, as shown on the left, where Big Ben, which is not what it is, that's Big Ben is the clock in the tower. But that's not the tower is not called Big Ben. I'm sure many people know that, but that's the yeah. But um, is silhouetted behind its accustomed defense. Signposts were removed from all roads above and shown, or in the streets of London below were barricaded and strongly guarded. So here we see. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't actually remember what this is called either. I would probably call it Big Ben, but it's not what it is. It's the, it's the, is it the bell, I believe, or the clock actually inside the tower? The tower is not called Big Ben. That is a common misconception, but, every, you know, everyone gets it wrong. But it is what it is. Obviously, yeah, they don't want the road signs. Because if an enemy invades and you have road signs, well, they'll know exactly where to go. You don't want that. And, yep, they're preparing defenses for if an invasion comes, they will be ready. Let me just check something ahead. Yeah, okay. England prepares to play host for an unwelcome visitor. July 1940. Local defense volunteers on the job. The threat of invasion to England was responsible for the introduction of many stringent precautions. In the picture at top, a temporary barricade has been erected uh, as on, on, on one road in southern England. These barricades were put in position at night and manned by defense volunteers. In the picture below, LDVs are learning to throw Molotov cocktails, which, if anyone knows where they got those names, it's a little funny. So this is a twofer, by the way. But yeah, we see the the homemade defenses. They're preparing their throwing arms. But yeah, make any defense you can. Slow down the enemy, because, I mean, at this time, they would be like, okay, well, what... What made the Germans win in France? It was their speed. They were so fast. So, your idea, slow them down. Make barricades. Do whatever. Slow the enemy down. If they lose their speed, maybe they won't win so much. You know, slow them down. So, barricades. And also, it's a good defensible position. So, barricade, barricade, barricade. Barricades are what you need. And, in the case of England... They are a smaller country. Obviously, they have their big empire. So technically, at this time, it's the British Empire. And they're not a small country. Um, but uh, England itself is very small. And there's not a ton of people relative to Germany. Um, so guerrilla war would also be something. That's why, you know, you have the Molotov. Molotov cocktails, you know. Get them ready. Um, the cocktail has a kick. The effects of of one of the Molotov cocktails on a dummy tank towed by a car is shown. The bombs, which are bottles partially filled with a mixture of gasoline, paraffin, and crude oil, were used by the Russians with much success during the Finnish campaign and were named for V.M. Molotov, the Soviet premier, um, 
daring foreign minister. Um, I don't think they got that right. That's wrong. It wasn't used by the Russians. It was used by the Finns in the Finnish campaign. The it got its name because the Russians dropped fire bombs. So this is wrong, by the way. This is wrong. I don't know if they're doing this because they're trying to be like, oh, you know, this technically was written when we were allies with the Soviets. Um, but it was used by the Finns because of Volostov Molotov. Um, Vyalotov? It's Vyalotov Molotov? I don't know. Molotov. Um, it was used by the Finns because they would get firebombs dropped on them and they were saying, oh, no, 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 no. Molotov would say, no, 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 no. We're not dropping firebombs. We're dropping aid packages and food. And so the Finns made the Molotov, uh, Molotov cocktail, and said, oh, we're just giving the boys drinks. As kind of like a slight to uh, Molotov statements, which, you know. Yeah. So this is wrong, though. Don't, don't, it's not, it wasn't Russians. I'm sure the Russians maybe used them as well, but that's not why they were created. They were created by the Finns, as far as I am aware. All right, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. Um, and as always, subscribe. It really is a great help. Thank you.